talk fast, you're on break as soon as I'm done. Duly noted, Krista, duly noted. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'm normally a pretty fast talker, so that really isn't a problem for me. <laughs> but I do want to be sure and get everybody's questions answered too. So um, some of the stuff you have already heard, Krista, because we had our SNA meeting this week. So you're a little ahead of the curve. You and a couple others on the call probably are a little ahead of, ahead of the curve. So Anyway, okay, let's go ahead and get started. We did go up about five or six more, but um, and some more may join in. So just as a reminder, we are still currently um, working through the 22-23 school year applications for NSLP and SVP. It's been open since the second week of July, and um, anybody that hasn't done it does need to do it we do still have some that have not started that process and um, we need that to be done you do have to insert an FY23 application first in order to complete that if you have questions we are here to help you please reach out to the main office for that um, the majority of the applications are approved we've got well over 500 I think when I checked this morning we were at 515 um, we have about 543 districts, so we are really close. Um, wow. There's just a few little things, loose ends to tie up with some of them, and then the ones that haven't started, we're going to start reaching out to um, here pretty quick by phone and say, hey, what's going on? Um, and then just keep in mind, you cannot file a claim until your FY23 application is approved. So um, if you've tried to go in and file a claim and you can't, it's because your application's got some issues and is not approved. So please reach out and we can help you get that, that going um, and finished up because we want them done just as bad as you do because we're tired of them as much as you are. <laughs> so, okay, next slide, please. Again, transitioning back to normal NSLP, just a few things that we still are getting calls on and hear about. Um, everyone is operating the NSLP SVP program this year. Not all meals are free this year. Of course, you can feed your kids for free if you're CEP or provision, but otherwise we are, you know, you gotta take the free and reduced meal applications um, unless you're a CEP or provision two or three. Um, and I say provision two or three, if you're in a base year, you, you should be collect, you, you do have to collect applications. You can't require the completion of a free and reduced price application. It's strictly voluntary. Um, and you may not withhold class schedules, bus schedules, grades, or other student records at, if they don't do one. Um, also a reminder, we still get calls on this fairly regularly. The economically disadvantaged form does not take the place of a free and reduced price meal application. You all probably know that that are on this call, but people at your district probably don't know that. So you can share that information with them, but um, the economically disadvantaged form does not take the place of a free and reduced price meal application. Okay, next. Again, production records are required to be maintained daily. We are unfortunately seeing this constantly right now. Production records are not being maintained. That's a huge problem, I know I'm probably preaching to the choir for those of you that are on the call, but it's a problem. Um, if you, you know, if you're self prep, someone at that kitchen manager, somebody at that district's got to be keeping production records every day, breakfast and lunch. If you're a district that contracts with a management company, that management company does those. You need to monitor that contract and make sure that that management company is holding up their end of that contract and doing production records. Uh, keeping in mind, there is not a meal pattern waiver for this year. You've got to follow the meal patterns. Um, so I know that there are still some supply chain issues out there. I have talked to a few food service directors on the phone and they tell me that while it is still, there are still some shortages happening, it's much more manageable than it's been in the past. So that's good news. We're not in the clear. And I know some of you may be having more trouble than others. I get that but it sounds like it's a little more manageable than it's been. So I hope that's happening for you all as well. Um, keeping in mind, temperatures on the serving line must be taken and recorded in the production record. You've got to main maintain food safety at all times. Refrigerator and freezer temperatures must be taken daily and recorded. Uh, this is also a requirement for your commodities. You need to keep your commodity inventory up as well. We're seeing that not being done. Um, so when we see that, we let Gina know, Gina reaches out. So um, again, things have to be maintained and records have to be maintained for claims to be filed. Okay, next. 
Uh, just a few reminders, if you are provision two or three or starting a base year for provision, for provision two or three this year, um, you will file claims in CARS as if you're not a provision two or three this year. I know that sounds odd, but we can help you with that if you have questions. Um, there's no need to complete the provision checklist in CARS at this time. That will be done at the end of the school year. Um, and it is it is officially and has been officially too late to apply for provision two or three for this school year. The deadline was August 1st. So just a reminder, there will be no more additions for provision two or three. Um, so just FYI on that. Um, the after school snack program also, or after school, the at risk after school program, I'm sorry, also known as third meal or the supper meal. Um, for us, it's the at risk after school program. That application process is currently open. So if you operate that program, you should be in there completing your application for the new fiscal year. Uh, reminder that this program runs on a federal fiscal year, which is October 1 to September 30th. And so that application is open and ready to be completed. If you have questions, um, you need to reach out to us and we can help you with that. We've been having tons of calls on how to do the application and even taking, um, you know, individual questions on those calls, just kind of interactive call to help you all get those approved. So please reach out to us with questions on that. And next. The Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program for school year 2022-23, that's a tongue twister. The schools that applied for Fresh Fruit and Vegetable for this school year have been chosen and notified. And I'm happy and pleased to announce that everybody that applied this year was awarded the grant. We had enough money to go around for those that applied. So good news on that. If you have questions on that, Rhonda Stevenson in our office is the point of contact for fresh fruit and vegetables. She can help you with that if you have questions. Next. Equipment grant. You all probably got an email this morning in cars. Equipment grant is open. We had to postpone it a little bit and here's the reason why. We were originally awarded $470,665 um, that's what we were thought we were getting. And as you can see, if you can see the PowerPoint, they being USDA is they threw 50 more million dollars at the equipment grant. So it is normally about a $30 million grant. They threw $50 million at it for this year. It's an $80 million grant. Our allotment for Oklahoma in tripled. We were uh, awarded now because of that. And that's why we had the delay in getting it out is we could not issue that information until it was made public um, through the White House. But Oklahoma now has over $1.2 million to award an equipment grant. Um, so it opened today. This morning, Edgar sent things out uh, through CARS. You apply through, well, he sent an email out through CARS on where to find everything. You do apply through CARS, the car system, in the checklist where you do your application, application and agreement. I think the bottom checklist all the way at the bottom is the equipment grant, and that's where you go to apply. We are having a Zoom call for this, and we'll walk through this process next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. That link was part of the email that went out today. That link did go out, I think, last week. That link will go out again on Tuesday morning before the call. So we are having a, an equipment grant. And again, our amount tripled. So we've got over $1.2 million to issue for equipment grant, um, awarding of equipment grant um, items. So the call, we will go further into that on the uh, call on Tuesday at two o'clock. Okay, next. We are getting a third round of supply chain funds. <laughs> Woohoo! Not as much as we've gotten the last two times. If you'll remember the first time it was over 14 million, the second time it was over 12 million. This one will be 7.7 .7 million roughly. So probably about half of what you got the first round is kind of what you can figure. We still have about 26 schools that have opted out every round. Before we can pay this out, we will have to reach out to those 26 schools to see if they want to opt in this time. If they don't, we reallocate that to everybody and we'll pay it all out at one time. Uh, we're we don't have the funds yet, but we're thinking it will be um, December, January timeframe. Might be sooner, but it, should, it, it wouldn't be really any later than that. The process for the funds is the same. 
can only be used for non-processed or minimally processed foods, keep in mind your milk and your fruits and vegetables. That's the best thing to buy with that, those dollars. Um, and in, uh, you know, the code is going to still be the same, 759. And these are child nutrition funds. We do have to pay them through your state aid account because our systems only pay out claims, which is tied to meals. That's the only thing our payment system, our, our car system can pay. Um, and so that's why we do that, but they are child nutrition funds. We will of course send uh, an email out when those are paid, reminding you of those very important details. Okay, next. Okay, some of you have probably received an email from dwgcpa at dwgcpa.com. <laughs> that is the company DWG Incorporated is a local CPA firm that we contract out for procurement reviews. They do those for us. So if you receive an email from them, from that, like I said, dwgcpa at dwgcpa.com, that is not a spam email. You do need to follow up with that. And in fact, probably need to check your junk or your spam file because sometimes it goes there. We do, we do hear about that too. Um, all, these reviews are conducted off site and documents are, you send the documents needed through an up, a, a secure uploadable system and they go straight to them and those documents are reviewed. Um, and then they email if they need more or if it's closed or whatever the case may be, it's all done through email. Um, we are also having a Zoom for procurement reviews um, on the same date as the equipment grant, but we're doing it an hour before. And yes, we realize we're going to have some overlap there, but we'll figure it out. We're going to be okay. Um, and that's Tuesday the 18th at one o'clock. So we'll get that figured out. Don't panic. We, we understand that we might just back up the equipment grant Zoom call just a few minutes, just in case. So um, as always, we've got tons of trainings that continue to go on. That's one thing that COVID has brought out is we've really uh, offer more trainings now, smaller, break them apart, more focused. Um, and on the screen are some upcoming trainings that you will definitely want to be part of, a part of, especially if you are having a procurement review. That's again next Tuesday at one. If you want to apply for the equipment grant, that is next Tuesday at two. We might start a few minutes late because of the procurement call, but that's okay. We'll get it done. Uh, We're going to have a low income call for traditional schools that are not provision on November 1st at 1.30. And then we're going to have a low income report for provision schools on this November 2nd at 1.30. It's that time of year, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're gonna do another food buying guide overview. Uh, always a good refresher if you haven't had that in a while, that's November 3rd at 1.30. And then right now um, we tentatively have our school call scheduled for November 7th. The next one would be November 7th at 1.30. Um, and again, don't know what could come about. Uh, I don't expect anything real breaking to come down from USDA, but um, that's those are our next trainings. Um, Kendra, can you touch on, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but could you touch on where they can find those, that information in CARS? Yes. So if you go to CARS and go to other documents, um, okay. it's on the left-hand side in the panel. It's kind of a mustardy color. Um, you could go on other doc documents, go down to training okay, we'll to information. And then in that training information. Okay. Have so I think that's my last oh, um, yep. slide. I think the next slide says questions. I didn't have a lot today. Yep, I was right. Next one's questions. Okay, so let me go to the chat again. Um, we put Rhonda, let's see. We put Rhonda Stevenson's uh, email, Edgar did, in the chat for questions on fresh fruit and vegetable. Um, Kendra put in the chat that there's a recording of the at-risk application walkthrough in CARS other under other documents under the at risk section heading so you can find that because we we have had a, a work a workshop a training on that at risk application walkthrough and so we posted it in cars and edgar also posted rhonda's um uh, uh direct line to call if you have questions okay as far as um if you've received previously received a grant can you apply now the rule of thumb is still in place that if you've received it once you 
can't receive it for the same site again um, unless we have excess funds because not enough people applied and we have excess funds, then we can award to those who have potentially been issued funds before. This year with $1.2 million, we've never had that amount of money for an equipment grant. It's normally between three and 400,000. Um, again, it's about triple what it normally is. I don't know what to expect. Um, I think in the past, we've probably gotten pretty close to a million dollars in requests, but um, I don't know that we've gone much over that. So that's how I'm going to answer that. But the rule of thumb, and it is in the grant in information, that if you've had one for a, for a site at your district in the past, since we've been doing equipment grant, which has been many years back, you, you cannot have another piece of equipment um, for that site through the equipment grant process unless we have excess funds. So, um, OK, PEBT update. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's a little bit I can update on. Um, summer, the summer 22 benefits were paid out the latter part of August or mid mid August, in July mid to mid August. It's a process to get it out. There were also some pickup files that have been sent to DHS, but those have not been issued, and it will be additional summer funds for families. So we're I don't have a timeline for that. Um, the corrections for 2021 school year benefits will open on October 24th. I can put that out there. There will be some training and some information still to come on that. We've got some processes uh, that we've got to get in place to issue that information because it's a big deal. Um, so more on that coming, but that's going to be October 24th um, for the 2021. Um, there is the possibility, well, I don't wanna say possibility. USDA has given us guidance on the school year, this school year, 22-23 PEBT, but a plan has not been submitted yet. So just FYI on that, it's a joint effort between DHS and us and we, we got to work together on it, and um, we, um, we have not submitted a plan for that yet, so just know that. And school year 20, this is getting confusing, I hate to say it, school year 21-22, school year PEBT, um, you know, I'm going to loosely say that will probably go out in November, uh, but I don't have a time. The files are just about done to go to DHS, and then they have quite a few processes they have to go through for sorting, and then they it, they can only issue so many on, on certain days. It's a process. Um, so that's kind of where, that's the update I have for PEBT. Um, Renita, has DWG started sending out emails? Yes, they have. My understanding is that those emails have gone out. So check spam, check junk. Um, okay, Teresa, when you say training before then, what do you mean? Could you elaborate on that a little bit for me? And I'll go on to the next one and pick back up. Um, we do know what schools will have a procurement review. If you're up for a AR, you'll have a procurement review, a child nutrition review. If you're a management company school, procurement reviews by regulation have to be done every three years. And so there are some schools that aren't up for child nutrition review, but because they're with a management company, they have to have a procurement review every three years, unlike uh, non-management company schools. Um, Kendra has that information. She's put her um, information in the chat. If you'd like to reach out to her, uh, she can let you know that. Um, okay, training before, uh, well, what will be before October 24th will be some general information and then the, um, I, my goal is the training that was developed for the corrections process will go out a few days. Let's see, October 24th is a Monday, and my plan, and I have others that I have to clear this through, is to hopefully have the actual training on how to make the corrections probably the Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday before the 24th. So we're looking at the 21st, 19th, 20th, or 21st. That, that's my hope. But we are working through the process on how to get this done. Um, and get it out to the districts for uh, information. We also have the correction for, uh, information that has to be made. Um, so we have some processes we have to work through to get that out, but that we got that timeline going now. Best timeline we've had in a while for those corrections, I'll tell you that. 
anything else? Because I'm at the end of the questions. Um, would be happy to take more questions if you all have them. And again, I know a lot of people are on break. So, um, okay. Again, I knew I, this wouldn't be a long call, but I, there, we wanted to get the equipment information out, grant information out to you. We wanted to get the, um, you know, the supply chain. You're going to have some more of that money coming. We wanted to get that out to you also. And then just general reminders are always helpful. I hope you guys are, school's going well with everybody up to this point. And I hope if you haven't had your break for fall break, I hope you enjoy yours. Um, Okay, hold on, there's a question. Do, who do parents get in touch with regarding PEBT if their children are eligible but not receiving? Well, it. I mean, if they just need to know if, I don't know how to answer this. A lot of things DHS handles specific to the cards, the issuing of cards, problems with cards, the loading of benefits on the cards, expungement, that's been a big thing lately. Some of the money because there's a policy that DHS has to follow that's regulatory to their programs that if money's not used by 274 days, it doesn't have to all be used within that 274 days. But if they got money and had $100 left on the card and they're getting close to their 274th day, they need to make a purchase because that restarts the 274 days. But if they haven't made a purchase with a balance on a card in over 274 days, there's a very good chance that that money has been expunged. And again, that's the DHS rule. That's not, a, that's not us. That is a, that's an Oklahoma DHS rule that they have to follow for those benefits and for SNAP. That is what DHS can handle. As far as what we do, we're actually taking the information that's sent from your student information system into the accountability report. So whatever feeds that, from the student information system into the accountability report, that's where we pull our data. So whatever's been put in there by the district is what gets sent to DHS. So, and again, a lot of parents think that my kids were fed free in school year 2021 and in school year 21-22, they just got free meals. Well, you're correct, they did get free meals. As you all know, you implemented that program, you know that. But in order to be eligible for PEBT, they had to have completed and had approved a free and reduced lunch application unless it's a participating CEP or provision two or three school. But if, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Edmund as an example because I know they're not provision. So even though Edmund was feeding free in 2021 and 21, 22, the parents had to complete and have approved by the school a free and reduced lunch application because that is their lunch status. The waivers serving all meals free was not a child's lunch status. And a lot of parents don't understand that. And a lot of parents didn't complete a form because they were getting free meals. And, and PEBT is tied to actual lunch status, free and reduced, a school participating in CEP or provision two or three and virtual learning. Just remember that that's something um, that you can help maybe help when you get calls that might help if you would if you explain that to the parents um, that might be beneficial but um, really if they call here and they want to know if their child's eligible we're looking at what was reported by the local district into the accountability report as far as their free and reduced status we can look at it and there's a column that says free reduced y or n and that's what we that's what we're looking at that's what's that's the data we've been given. I don't know how much that helps you, Jessica, but I hope it helps you a little bit. Again, if you have other questions, please put them in the chat. I'll be happy to answer. <clears throat> PEBT has been very hard on the state agencies, the local districts, and the parents. Again, this is a program that never existed before the pandemic. Congress came up with this program, issued the, got some guidance <laughs> that was a little questionable at times and changed some also. And they just said, here states, here's a brand new program that's never been implemented before. You need to work with your agency and the SNAP agency in your state and make it work, go. It's not ideal. And it hasn't been ideal and I've said that all along. I, I, it's, it's crazy, crazy busy time. So um, again, if you have questions in there or anything, let me know. 
and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, so any other questions? Okay, I'm at the end of the chat and I'm at the end of questions and uh, I hope you guys, if you haven't had your break, enjoy it when it comes, if it's next week or maybe it's now, you need to get, you need to go enjoy your break. Like Krista said, she needed me to talk fast so she could get to her fall break. Um, I'm glad you joined us. Uh, if you have questions, reach out to us. Thanks for what you continue to do. And I'm not going to stay on because um, I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, again, reach out to us if you have questions. You can always reach out to your um, regional child nutrition program specialist as well with questions. So you guys have a great rest of your day and let us know if we can help you. Thanks for everything you do. Have a good rest of your week and enjoy your fall break. Bye, everybody. <laughs>